Podcast listening people, yeah. humbled, humbled, humbled to have you here. Do us a small favor before you leave today. Do not forget to subscribe to the podcast and please leave us a review. Give us a shout on social media too, wherever you're hanging out. We love to hear from you guys and we love your feedback. It really helps us continue to make this a great platform for you. We're here to bring you the top information, insights, tools, tips, and tricks of the trade from the powerful entrepreneurship, leadership, influencer, ship community that we have in Colorado and connected up with the Mile High City. So again, um, appreciate it. And I have a fantastic show for you today. Samantha Joy is an identity coach to aspiring entrepreneurs and influencers. Her coaching approach focuses on the concept of Minimalism, which is becoming a much more popular thing, uh, I think, you know, especially with the millennial Gen Z, uh, have seen a lot of our parents and the boomer generation have a big emphasis on stuff, right? And um, we've seen where that's gotten them. And so minimalism is really becoming popular. She enables others to shift their identity to their most authentic self by decluttering aspects of their life. So not just physical, but also relationships and other dynamics, life rooted in in an older story. And the result is enhanced mental clarity, improved sense of self the ability to design an environment that attracts abundance and fulfillment, which I hope that you will create for yourself. And I hope that this podcast is a medium to empower you to do that. And Samantha is just a really great gal. I, I, I've i met with her a couple times. I really enjoy um, talking to her. You'll have to check out her book, which we'll talk about in the podcast. So you have to listen in to find out what that is. And Samantha is also, uh, go give her a congrats. She just had her child, which is really funny and interesting because she is the second guest we've had in the last several episodes. If you remember, Natalie Euling was literally just about to have her baby when we had her on. Same with Samantha. Samantha went into labor the evening after we recorded our podcast together. So if you're pregnant and you're ready to have your child and, and uh, you know, maybe you're running a little late, just come on to the podcast and that'll probably happen. You're, you'll probably have your baby the very next day after you come on to the Mile High Mentors podcast. But we talked a lot about a lot of great stuff, guys. I, I'm so excited to share this with you. Before we do that, real quick, if you're interested in partnering up with the podcast with Mile High Mentors, you want to collaborate, partner up in one way or another, something we're always open for and looking to do. So send us an email, milehighmentors at gmail.com or wherever you see us, hang it out on social media, just slide on in to the DMs, send us a message, and we'll see what we can do to partner up. Also, if you sell products and services business to business, you probably realize that LinkedIn is the platform to be to grow your sales, grow your marketing reach, beat competitors, the clients, but a lot of people don't know how to use the platform effectively. So we are partnered up with Active Blogs and they're putting on a free training called the Missing Links to LinkedIn Success. Go give that a watch, activeblogs.com forward slash webinar. Again, activeblogs.com forward slash webinar and you can give that a watch for free. Okay, guys, without further ado, please welcome Samantha Joy to the Mile High Mentors podcast. Let me ask you this, you know, you're in Colorado, this is the Mile High Mentors podcast. What is your favorite part about Colorado? Um, my favorite part about Colorado. Oh my gosh. So I little backstory high level is I, you're a human being. This is a human being, a human being podcast for human beings. Okay. 
That's good. Cause yeah, I guess I am. I forget sometimes. I think as entrepreneurs, we forget we have to be perfect yeah. for everybody, right? Yes. Um, back to your question. <laughs> yeah. So I have lived in, and I, I wrote this in my book and shared this story kind of openly for the first time, but I have lived in six cities in the course of 10 years. I've moved around a lot. So Denver, Colorado in general, by far is my favorite place. And the reason is it literally has everything I loved about every city I lived in, in one place. And it's like, you can be in a city and 10, 15, 20 minutes later, you're in the mountains. And I also just love the culture. I love that. You know, I've been in cities where it is entrepreneurial to an extent, but it's very competitive. Everyone's kind of doing their own agenda here. It's very collective. That's why we're on this podcast today, right? I love what you're doing, by the way, because it really is bringing this community of entrepreneurs together because sometimes, often, not sometimes, more times than not, we feel really like we're on an island. And Entrepreneurship um, is lonely as, (laughs) and I've said it It a lot, and I've talked about it a lot with other um, people. You know, yeah. sometimes self-imposed in ways that we don't recognize. And sometimes um, it's just, you know, part of the thing that comes along with entrepreneurship. So, Absolutely. So the, the culture here is not just really healthy and fit and all about wellness, which is just fantastic for me because it's something I just love to do. And it gets me very motivated, not just to get up in the morning, but to do what I do in my work but it's really collective and there's just always something to do. There's always people to meet. There's always people welcoming you. And um, yeah, I mean, between the landscape and the culture, it just, it's a win-win and, and I'm a vegan. So it's like a, it's like the jackpot here. It's very easy to eat. Yeah. Vegan hub. Well, it wasn't forever. I mean, a lot of the yeah. vegan influence from California floated over here. I'm not vegan, but I'm a uh, celiac. So I, you know, mm-hmm. do have to do the gluten-free thing and it's funny you know, it's such a fad that it's good, but it's also when you go to a restaurant and you're like, is this gluten free? And people give you kind of like the stink eye a little bit. It's like, no, I'm actually, you know, celiac. Yeah, I am not, but I just feel so much better when I don't eat gluten. Um, So I'm one of those people making it harder for you. So sorry. Or easier. I don't know. (laughs) Say that again. Or easier. I don't know. But it's like, they're like, do you have celiac? I'm like, no, but you should try not eating gluten and you'll you know, your life will change. Yeah. I mean, consumers are going to drive what we want here anyway. So if we want less, you know, gluten in our product or just, you know, more gluten-free opportunities and more restaurants are going to rise to the occasion. What's what, so what's your favorite place to eat uh, as a vegan in Denver? Oh, there's a few. Okay. This isn't like the fanciest, nicest place, but I just love it because I used to live downtown or, you know, down the street from it in Cherry mm-hmm. Creek, but native foods, are you familiar with that? It's kind yeah. of, it's counter food. It's not fast food, um, but it's like you go up and order. Uh, they have a chain, you know, of restaurants around the country and it's just really awesome vegan food. Like I've taken people that aren't vegan and they're literally like, I forgot it was at a vegan place. It's fantastic. Do you like Indian food? I love it. Yeah. They have a lot of vegan food. I love Indian food. It's my favorite. It's probably the number one thing I cook is curry regularly. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So who were, uh, like, when you were growing up, who were some of your biggest influencers before the age of 18? Yeah, that's an easy one. And I have to say I was really blessed. So um, it, it started a little rocky in the childhood. Parents split. Um, but my mom is a single mom. She was really trying to find herself and find her strength in that role. And I would see kind of her bookcase of books. And like before I knew it, it was, you know, Tony Robbins and Jack Hanfield and um, Wayne Dyer and Eckhart Tolle, you know, all the Louis, Louise Hay, all the big names. Right. And um, I remember like in my adolescent years being really kind of curious, like what are all these books about? And they look, they all had these covers that looked so powerful. And you're like, what's in here? Like, what is this about? And this is not stuff they teach in school. We know this. So I would kind of grab some of those books sometimes, but um, I was also, again, an adolescent, you know, acting out hormonally. So I couldn't let my mom know that, you know, we, we, I liked something that she liked. So I would take the books, I'd leaf through them, I'd read them. Um, like Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within was one of my favorite, favorite books. And so that kind of influenced me really early on, you know, 
How old were you when you started like consuming oh, gosh. self-development content? I was like 12. Um, these are, can you hear my dogs? <laughs> yeah. I asked them to go through the bath, but you know, life happens. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I would say really, I was lucky because I think people find this later on in life, which any point is great, but those are pretty much my biggest influencers to really help mold my mind that, you know, we have control over where our life goes, the course of our life and kind of our mindset and the power of the mind uh, in getting where you want to be. Um, because I think we are, especially in the educational system as a younger child or teenager, we're, we're not like always told this kind of hallmark story of you can do everything. Like not everyone grew up in that family that says, you know, you're going to be great. Sometimes we have, but you must have though, if your parents were, if your mom was like reading and consuming those books, like kind of had to have had a little bit of extra influence in that, in that direction. Right. I, I, yeah, I, they didn't definitely didn't discourage. And were they entrepreneurs? Um, I, I suppose my father was, he was a, uh, ended Um, he, he's since retired, but he started a practice. So, um, but it was still kind of that baby boomer mentality of, work, hustle, grind. And it, you know, we're in like the digital age where we can scale. Um, this like one to many, we don't need a brick and mortar, low maintenance concept. It, you know, entrepreneurship has since changed from that generation. But yeah, with my father, it was, he came from nothing. It was that story of he had nothing and he built his practice from nothing. And he became very, very successful, very well known. And, but it was, he always had to be present and he had to be there. And it was this one-on-one, you know, patient doctor thing. And, um, I didn't see him very much. And, um, but with my mother, I think she was in a very kind of introspective internal place in her life where she was absorbing it. And it was around college kind of, if you know, I'm sure the listeners will remember the secret, you know, and Oprah kind of blew that up. But, um, that was a turning point for her, which also was a turning point for me. And the, the book. a lot of people, yeah, mm. in the movie, I guess that was also very popular at the time, which is kind of cool about getting a lot of attraction out there because it was something that I had read about years and years and years before, um, and it was becoming more acceptable at that time. But that for me was a bigger turning point because my mom really, I don't want to say went public, but really emerged into the person she is today and continues to be and evolve. Um, so she, I, I think her and I connected more on, you know, at that point in my life and I wasn't a moody teenager anymore. So <laughs> that helps. And now we're like best friends and she's, you know, amazing. She's my biggest, biggest influencer. It's so life. funny. I was talking about this the other day and I don't, you know, somebody who's listening might be in that, uh, that, um, you know, phase between, you know, maybe 15 and 18 and 20, like the rebellious phase, right? Of your parents, you got to go through that rebellion phase at some point in time. But I was saying the same thing. It's like, I'll never, you know, never go into sales for a couple years and I'll never do this, never do that. And then, you know, my, my parents are crazy and now I'm like best friends with my parents yeah. like in business <laughs> and like all this stuff. So yeah. yeah. They know, you're, you're giving me hope. Uh, you know, I have my little one coming any day now. And so you're giving me hope that he uh-huh. might not, he might not hate me one day. So that's great. No, he'll go through <laughs> the phase. But guys, you know, guys are different from girls. Girls rebel differently than guys in some ways, but um, not all the time. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's different, you know, with, it depends on the mom relationship, the dad relationship and all that good stuff. So, but it sounds like for you, a lot of your early influencers were not necessarily even direct people, but it was content. It was information that you were um, going out and consuming regularly. It really was. That's, that's a funny observation. Um, I didn't really ever feel that I connected to anyone really in my educational system. I always felt like there was more and I felt like you know, like this wasn't it for me. Um, I think a lot of people kind of follow that structure and live in that box and that status quo. There's nothing wrong with that. If they find fulfillment and happiness in there for me, I didn't. So, and I never did, you know, I, I don't know why I just, I think sometimes, you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different passions. Sometimes you don't know what that passion is or what your purpose is. You just know it's not where you are. Um, And I think for me, 
it wasn't there. And I, you know, I grew up as a dancer. I was a competitive dancer. I did, um, I, I was in like all the classical dance of like jazz and hip hop and ballet. And then I, not hip hop, sorry, jazz, lyrical ballet. And then hip hop I got into and I was like breaking the mold a little. And then from there I did a uh, competitive uh, international Latin ballroom. And that was wow. really awesome. Really taxing on the body, but really awesome. I miss it all the time. I mean, it's not cheap. Um, it was, you know, private lessons five days a week for years and years and years. And Were you traveling internationally to compete? So I was um, like right before college, it was kind of, that was my path. And it's very traditional in the sense that the, uh, in my case anyway, from, you know, when I was doing it, I was kind of placed with a partner. So it was like, I would go to them. So I was looking at colleges in these different areas to pursue that. And I (laughs) kind of had this last minute freak out. And I thought to myself, you know, I'm not good enough. You know, I think we've all kind of been there where I'm not good enough and I'm not worthy and I need to do something safe and reliable. And guess where that took me? Um, I majored in accounting. I went to college and I majored in accounting and I don't want to say I have any regrets because I, there's a, there's a journey I had that led me to where I am today that I'm, I'm extremely content with. Um, five, six, seven years ago, if you asked me, I'd say, hell yeah, I regret this. You know, I wish I was a dancer, but, um, yeah, having regrets isn't healthy. And also for me, it was kind of like a huge learning experience and, um, and led me, led me to where I am today. So I just like taking notes when I do podcast because I always yeah. get, you know, little golden nuggets and stuff. Yeah. When you, when you went in, you know, going from competitive, um, dance and also like, I'm sure that probably a lot of people who have either played sports in high school or done some sort of competitive um, athletic ventures or whatever when they were younger, that probably plays a a major role in your entrepreneurship now, right? Being able to push through a lot of struggles. But um, my question is when you were um, going into college, did you have a vision of what you wanted to do at that time? Like, did you have a big picture vision or um, you were more just going to school to like get, you know, knock that off the checklist so kind of back to, I always knew there was more when I, my intention of going out to school was, I still went to a performing arts college, um, or at least, you know, remained in dance and acting and arts. Uh, so there was that, but it, wait, felt, you got an accounting degree in that? I, I transferred out and I ended I up. I see. Okay. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I was like, Oh, interesting. Strange. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's accounting like I, ballerinas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it's my, my pre at my previous job. I feel like I have to give him a little shout out. My CEO, we called him the dancing CEO and it was a accounting consulting firm. And, uh, but he's also a choreographer. So it's like, oh, that's fun. there's, there's a, there's something to be said about, I'm not tooting my horn. I'm just saying, I, I feel like that's why I was able to thrive in a different facet in the accounting industry. I was more in the kind of systems technology, um, consulting people on how to, you know, not to go down that road, but how to kind of like grow their business and leverage it using automation and things like that. I was in, in public accounting doing audit and tax. And I'm like, no, no, I'm a dancer. Like I, this is not creative in any way, shape or form. Although there are accounts that get very creative with their clients taxes. Um, that was not me, but anyway, so, uh-huh. yeah, it was like, it was like this, uh, I went to school and I still pursued that, but it, I was, you know, I think I'm, guilty like many others of needing that safety net feeling like this isn't exactly what I want to be doing at all, especially with the cost of it all. But it is something that everybody does and it will guarantee me work and and all of those things. You know, my mindset has since shifted and now, you know, being a mother soon, I'm so excited to teach my son that it's not the only way. You know, and I think that's changing, especially with Gen Z and future generations is this is this is not the only way. And it's it's really incredible to see this shift in the world and in in people's, you know, perspective on how to build a business and build a, a fulfilling life. This whole like work hard, play hard, I think is starting to fall away a little bit. And I think Mm -hmm. older generations are having trouble with that because Mm. we come from uh, immigrants coming over and, you know, the baby boomers working really hard for nothing. And, and we do have to give them credit because now in our generation, we 
have way more options at our fingertips. Mm-hmm. You know, um, well, what you said have. earlier on, which was really great, is the one to many. Like we have mm-hmm. technology tools where uh, our grandparents who migrated here um, would have had to spend 20 hours a week getting the same amount of reach to people that we can in 30 minutes. Yeah. Right. Like that blows my freaking mind every day. It's like, guys that you're, you're listening to this right now. Um, the amount of opportunity that's out there is outrageous compared to um, our parents. Cause really a big differentiator in a business succeeding and not is reach like being able to get in front of enough people. And the, the kind of the format of businesses and, and even of consumers has changed too. So it's like you have to go where your people are. And I think uh, not to go back to the accounting industry, but something I learned even just from like a sales perspective and all of that is, you know, who are we marketing to and, and who's, who owns the businesses now and who's going to need our services, especially these like very technical, uh, you know, new age cutting edge services. Well, it's not going to be older generations in any way. Those are, those are getting handed down to newer generations who are restructuring these businesses. So um, I think it's really fantastic what's happening. I think that it is also potentially, and this is the work I do with clients, it's potentially why people going into entrepreneurship I work with, the majority of my clients are people coming out of corporate America trying to start a business and not necessarily in, you know, I, I, I come from a long, hard road of consulting. So I do have that background and those credentials, Mm. but it's more in terms of helping people take that leap. People come to me and say, I'm in this job. I can't stand it. I don't know how to get out. And and I don't necessarily have the money to do it. How can I do it? And I've done it. I've been there and I've done it. And I think I'm, I'm confident from what I see and what I've experienced personally is because there are so many options, like you said, and you can get that reach, but there's just like so many channels. We go into entrepreneurship and then we freeze because we say, we're almost like too fortunate to have so many options that we don't even know what to do. Information overload, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sh- oh yeah. man, I'm so inter- I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. it's so interesting that you bring that up because, like, I talk to a lot of different entrepreneurs, and I, you know, watch social media, and I see my peers that are going into entrepreneurship, and it's like there's no one pure focus. That's probably the biggest downside of it. You're absolutely right. Is the shiny object syndrome. There's so much opportunity. It's like you're not going to get anywhere very successfully without like a pure focus, a niche, a focus area, a you know key bread and butter of what you're working on. So that was really well, interesting. Yeah, not to plug. <laughs> Give the plug. But yeah, Give I mean plug. that that is the less effect. That's my program. That's my book. The book goes into kind of the why behind the whole idea. I love that you mentioned that I could talk about focus, simplicity, all those things all day long, because for me, that's when I actually started to step into my vision and my highest identity. And that's what my work is about is helping people get rid of things and clutter. And it's not just in the way of, you know, there's this wave of minimalism and this trend. And that's what kind of started me on it was I felt extremely powerful and this undeniable clarity when I would clear things out of my space around me. Mm. Um, Not just because it wasn't distracting me anymore, but because it was, it was harnessing this power of being able to detach from things from my old identity. Right. So, and then that overflowed into kind of relationships, right? So this is another piece that we we work on in this program is who's around you. Like I, I don't like to compare people to items that we kind of discard, but in the same way, let's take inventory. Let's get conscious of the relationships that we have either consciously or unconscious, unconsciously, subconsciously created around us. And like, are they serving us? Do we really need them in our lives? And then how to detach from them? So less distraction in that way. Right. Um, and then that kind of spilled over cause it kind of, uh, works, um, you know, in, in a chronology of physical stuff, once you gain the power to get rid of that, you can now gain the confidence to kind of say, all right, I'm ready. Like I'm in this new identity from an environmental standpoint, physical environment anyway, to detach from relationships that aren't serving me. And then from there, it's kind of saying like, all right, what are these habits around me? And and what's this routine I'm in or lack of routine I'm in? Um, And how can we shed, you know, we, we spend hours on social media. We are, 
like just pacifying ourselves every day and constantly bombarded by noise. Yeah. And Mm. mind numbing. And, uh, if you're not conscious to it, you'll get sucked in because it's coming from everywhere. Right. Right. Um, so the idea is that we go through and, and kind of declutter all these areas. And from there we have the power to design our lives the way we want. So my, (laughs) my biggest pet peeve is, but I've been there, so I'm compassionate to it, right? But is people that can't get out of their own way, people that self-sabotage. I mean, we all do it for various reasons, but claiming that kind of like, well, thanks for your advice, so-and-so, but I can't do that because X, Y, Z. If you're looking for an excuse, you'll always find it. So I help talking. people. Yeah, I help people Ego kind of make over. their excuse their reason, right? Um, mm. And then... Yeah, doing this work has been really powerful for me too because I get to see people leave jobs. I get to see people leave really serious relationships. Um, I get to see people move across the country. And it's, it's you know, you can talk about mindset all day long, this whole mindset of like, gotta shift your mindset. And then we can, then everything's better, you know. But if you don't shift your identity first for that mindset to follow, it's, it's never going to happen for you. And as long as you're keeping things that are attached to your story, you know, our, our story that we talk about, the story we tell ourselves of why we can't do whatever it is we're not doing, we keep those things around us. You can shift your mindset all day long. You can listen to all those people and those podcasts mm. and read those books. You'll go back to that old identity. Mm. So, the, so the attachments that we have be it physical relationship are what build up the identity and you can't really um, in, impact yourself in the other ways without fixing the identity first. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And I think that people feel stuck. That's the thing. I work with people that feel stuck because if you hated your corporate job, for example, or whatever job you're in, if you were very unhappy or relationship, whatever it is, and you want to leave, you, if you're still in that old identity and that's, you're living in that story, you're just going to keep telling yourself that story and you're going to stay where you are because mm-hmm. otherwise you would have left. So it takes a dramatic shift. It is not easy, but it is simple. And the concept is changing your environment. And it really mm-hmm. does help you gain the confidence of, okay, like I'm now stepping into this new identity. I now have I do have the power. I do have way more control over my situation than I thought. I mean, it really helps people step out of this victim mentality as well. So what, what was your transition? I mean, from your corporate job, what was the straw that broke the camel's back that you went off into, into entrepreneurship? So it's, it's funny you ask. So for me, um, I'm just going to take this back to when I work with clients and they are quite, you know, not questioning. They're pretty adamant on, I really want to leave. I'm just not sure how, right. Mm -hmm. There's this really big, sexy story out there. That's kind of like, you know, I, I knew I had to get out of there. So I left and I had not a dollar to my name and I slept on my friend's couch and I was homeless and I sold my car and everyone's like, you know, and now I'm making half a million dollars. Right. And not always the easiest story to believe, first of all. Sounds awesome, but not always the, the full truth, I'll say. And it really discourages people that don't necessarily have the confidence or have a family and are like, that's great for you, 22-year-old, but I can't do that. You know, I, that is not for me. Just because they can't do it that way doesn't mean they can't do it. So to go back to your question, it, for me, it was... It was leveraging everything at my last job uh, through something called entrepreneurship. So being very entrepreneurial in a employed setting, right? um, which was very helpful for me to develop skills that I otherwise were using in my side hustle. So that was another thing was that started for me. Coaching started for me in 2012 um, was when I really started. And I actually started uh, doing fitness coaching because I was competing and everyone's like, how did you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. And I was, I got certified as a trainer and kind of went that route. And then, you know, it, it's all in the book, but basically I 
was really over the whole aesthetic thing and was digging deeper with people. Some people liked it, some people did not, but it was kind of like, wait, why do you want this? Why do you care about your appearance or what is this really about? Um, and I hung on to a few clients and got to do some deep work with them, which was fantastic. I got my own business coach. So through that process, it was a slower process for me. It was building up this coaching side of things for me and simultaneously uh, building up the consulting side in my nine to five. And so it just, it came to, honestly, my, my catalyst was getting pregnant. It was very unexpected. I, um, had some complications and then this happened for me and it was kind of like I had a bigger purpose. You know, it's everyone's catalyst is different, but for me, that was, that was what made me make this change was I'm not willing to, you know, maybe if it's just me, I'm willing to kind of coast this way, but not for my child. And especially when I want to teach my child, you can do anything, you know, the sky's the limit. Well, I have to live in integrity and live that way. And um, so for me, that was like the biggest catalyst. And for me, I had built. So did you, did you exit out of that situation that I want to go impact people and empower them to leave? Like that was your vision when you left there or was it something totally different at that point in time? So I'm going to be totally transparent with you, Connor. Um, I had people. Please do not lie to me. (laughs) I've been lying this whole time except for now. (laughs) JK. Um, So I had people coming to me wanting to leave. It just was like who I attracted Mm. before I had left corporate America. And mm. that, that's why I'm really big on this identity work because you really can't be successful unless you're living it and you're living in integrity and you're fulfilled in what you're doing. I have to say, since, since I made that switch, I mean, things have progressed exponentially for me and that's, you know, not a surprise, but um, it's just who I happen to attract. What I will say is I don't, to me, I don't feel like in my journey you know, being that way that I was still working for an employer, but getting people wanting to leave. I worked with businesses every single day. I helped launch startups. I helped people grow their businesses from, you know, an internal kind of infrastructure, whether it was their organization structure or their technology or whatever it was. I knew my, can I say S-H-I-T? Can I swear? (laughs) Well, you already spelt it. Yeah. Let her fly. I knew you mean shit. shit? Yes, yeah. please say shit. I knew my please shit. Let, let her go. I usually ask people before we start because I'm I maybe I need to clean that up when I'm a mom. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, well, so yeah, I mean, that's the thing is like, yeah. who cares? It's real. That's transparent. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So who it. Cares yeah. That I, you got acid reflux while you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> like, who, who cares? Good thing that's all I shared with you. Um, but yeah, so it's kind Natalie of. Natalie like, was pretty. <laughs> uh, Natalie was pretty you know, in depth about some of her situations she was dealing with too. So don't worry about it. Yeah, it's real. I like that we're real. I love her. I love like, she's on like, um, Instagram stories, like showing off her diaper and stuff like that. (laughs) It's so inspirational. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Okay. So Uh, yeah. So I can say shit. Let's keep going. So yeah. yeah. So I, I knew my shit. So I was still very confident that I could help people. Um, and I will say that I started behind a desk nine to five in that kind of corporate ladder. And um, my last position, I was a vice president. I was kind of just mm. creating the quarterly plans and our strategy. And I, I, it was that whole entrepreneurship. So I did feel like I was almost helping run a company to an extent. Um, but yeah, it was definitely once I made the decision to get out and really just pursue this full time. And it wasn't alone. I have major support and, and people encouraging me and everything. And if you don't, if you don't have that, I mean, that's another big piece of this work I do is, is really decluttering and designing your social environment as I call it, because Mm. this whole, you know, this whole self-made thing that people are doing out there, this hashtag self-made it's, it makes me laugh because no one's self-made. Everyone. I'm going to hashtag self-made this video. When you hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did it by yourself. I'm just a hologram, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you need that. And so, um, that was a big piece for me too, is really applying this whole concept to my own life constantly. Mm, isn't that funny? Self-made. Yeah. That's a funny concept. We've talked about it a lot on this podcast, the yeah. self-made. It's like, and, and I really, this was a shift I had to make in my own life. So that's why I feel very drawn to your message 
is um, success does not occur in a vacuum, no matter who you are, whether you're Elon Musk or Bill Gates or whoever, Joe Schmo, like it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Correct. And anyone that claims it does, it's, it's, again, it kind of goes back to that whole story of people leaving their jobs and leaving it all. And, and maybe that's what they did. I mean, I don't know, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, this whole social media thing with comparison and people seeing, Oh, he's self-made and he's worth $10 million or he just left his job and I could never do that. And, you know, uh, taking these things with a grain of salt. Right. So you're the, the folks that you're working with, are they mostly seeking to leave their nine to five to start their own business or they're just mostly unhappy with the way things are going they're not seeing the results I want to see and they need to make a shift whether they become an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur. It's the latter. Mostly mm. it's people saying kind of like that I experienced was I knew through the educational system where, you know, people know in their jobs, like this isn't it for me. There's more I had. So there's passion and there's purpose. And I kind of work through that and your passions lead you to your purpose. And so we do really, really deep work around that. And a lot of that is, you know, creating a shift by removing things. It's all about less, right? That's for me, that's like the message I die for is less is the answer because it creates that clarity. But it's a lot of times people that are like, I am so unhappy and I just don't know what to do next. I need that support. I need a major shift. And my program is only eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's extremely hands-on. So it's really for people that are really ready to make a shift and really discover what that is. And then at the end, um, it's, it's discussing the shifts and kind of what the plan is and all of that. And people really, I mean, even in the first week of, or two weeks rather, like the second week is the physical environment module of decluttering. People are transformed and it, it's such a simple thing. Um, but it's, you know, it can be challenging. So having that support is good and, and having a community of other people that have gone through this, this process as well, um, has been key. So do you like, do you go to encourage an entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship? Like, does it really matter? Like to fit the criteria that um, you've built and the context in your message, do you have to be an entrepreneur or is this also for the entrepreneur? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be either because at the end of the day, and this is what I write in the book, it's design your life for happiness and purpose. There are many, many, many people that are extremely happy and fulfilled and feel like their purpose is being carried out in their employed jobs. And the reason is, I believe, because they have possessed that uh, entrepreneurship, rather. And they are in a position where they are heard, so they're fulfilled. Mm -hmm. There is progression. There is reward. um, There's innovation, creativity. Like, all of that is part of it. It's not a punch-in, punch-out situation. And I think, kind of as we said businesses, the the format of businesses are changing. There's more remote workers, which gives people more flexibility, whether it's because it's with their family or they have a side hustle or they have a passion that they're following. So um, it's not to say entrepreneurship is better than employment. Um, It's just what makes you happy and and feeling fulfilled in your day to day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have people coming in saying, you know, I, I have a couple that I just finished a program with that I was doing one on one or one on two, rather. Um, my first couple, they, you guys know who you are. Um, they were fantastic. And I had the husband was really much like, you know, the, the wife was like, I'm not happy, like zero out of 10, like get me out. I think I know what I want. Let's work on that. The husband was like, I feel pretty fulfilled in my job. And, you know, how can I kind of leverage my passions within my job and all those things? Well, towards the end, he's like, I'm out. I got to get out. <laughs> so wow. people, yeah, people come in and they think because when you to- run them through the pressure test, yeah. mm-hmm. then come to find out they actually aren't, you know, fulfilling their full happiness. Yeah. And the reason that I find that that's happening and that um, is kind of buried in the beginning and, and later gets uncovered is again, we're just inundated with noise as you call mm-hmm. it, which I love. Mm-hmm. And we do a lot of deep work around asking questions and going really, really deep inside and getting introspective and journaling. And there's a point where you get so, so deep that you can't deny what it is that you want. And um, there's something about having accountability and having a coach and having a program and think something to fall back on 
uh, and, and as a sounding board to actually gain the confidence to, to make that shift if that's what you choose. Yeah, accountability is big because again, being in your own vacuum, you know, you're even if you are pretty self motivated, accountability is really, really challenging. And I like that you've said you've hired coaches yourself. Oh, I absolutely, 100%. Um, yeah. It's imperative because <laughs> I don't want to say I'm lazy, but I think we all, it's not a laziness, more of like a lack of clarity. And if we don't stay on top of things like that, we lose it. We don't know which direction to go in and it gets, uh, it gets overwhelming. You know, I was putting together this ebook. I'm going to be transparent again and that'll be launched. Uh, and then everything week. else besides when Samantha yeah. says she's being transparent is just a blatant lie. Parker. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys take this podcast with a grain of salt, I suppose. No, no. So, so I, and I, I asked uh, a mentor of mine, you know, like I put this last page in this order. Is this right? Is this going to work? And, uh, she literally is like, what do you think? And I'm like, well, I think it looks great. She's like, okay, then do it. There's no one, there was a, that's a trick question. There's no one way to do something, you know, and at the end of the day, action creates clarity. And so if I can help people get unstuck, you know, in their day to day to actually do something, they realize, oh my gosh, I know the answer now, you know, I, I get it versus just, sitting in the same thing every single day, compounding this current identity that isn't getting us anywhere. Mm. Well, I was, I mean, it's really interesting that you were doing that couples work and the guy was, um, you know, at a 10, at a level 10 of happiness with his career. So for people that are listening to this and they're like, I love my job and you know, what, how, how can you, um, what are some easy steps that they can take to create that clarity and to refocus their identity for what their true, like their soul and their passions are. Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of visualization and that to me is, so a lot of people come in saying, you know, I, they want one thing and then they realize through the program they want another. And the reason is that we're breaking those boundaries. So we're helping to go into their mind to retrain their their brain and their subconscious that there's more possible for them. So they, sometimes people say they feel fulfilled, but in what capacity, you know, like are you, how big or how small are you thinking? And maybe you feel fulfilled because your mind only allows you within these certain parameters of what's possible. So you're finding people aren't thinking big enough. Yeah. And that's again, not for me to say, but as we go through these kind of visualizations and these exercises, I'm a huge, huge fan of hypnotherapy. I don't know if it's anything you've experienced or done or learned about. Um, It absolutely changed my life. Uh, There's a woman, uh, Grace Smith Pitosa. She just released the book. I'm going to give her a shout out. I'm absolutely connecting you guys because she's blowing up. She's making hypnosis mainstream. Um, But I met her when she was just my hypnotherapist and she, that alone, those visualizations, uh, learning how to break the boundaries in my own mind from the way that I grew up in my story helped me to realize like, even just in the, the accounting world, I didn't have to sit behind a desk and do taxes and, and all of that. So that launched me in my last position into an early thirties, young woman in a VP position in a male owned company, um, And that, yes, it was an entrepreneurship, but it was helping me to learn how to break those boundaries and visualization is huge. So for anyone that, you know, like we all know deep down what we want, but with the noise, we just accept it. And and so hypnotherapy is one of the pathway is one of the shortcut ways to get there to identify that. Is, Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And so we do that in, in that. And I'm, I'm launching this all online and I'm mm. actually going to be working with Grace and she's going to be creating some recordings because I cannot vouch for this enough. And I, it doesn't, ha- you know, it's, people think hypnotherapy, they think hypnosis, they think doing the chicken dance on stage. What it really is, is she calls it meditation with a goal, which I love because it's, it's training your brain and it's reshaping kind of the, the molecules within your body to believe that more is possible. Um, these people huh. that created multi-million dollar, billion dollar companies, they're not, you know, of a different planet. They're flesh and right. blood humans like us. They likely came from 
less and here they are. So mm. the visualization. To think. So how is, how is hypnotherapy different from like NLP? Cause that's something I started, started one of my mentors who I've had on this podcast, um, JV crumb, who is a conscious millionaire. Um, he's really heavy in the NLP space but I haven't heard him talk so much about hypnotherapy. So like what's the different differentiators between the two? Yeah. So I'm going to leave that up to the professionals, but what mm-hmm. I will say is both are definitely two things that come down to visualization and getting in that mindset of, of kind of breaking patterns, um, you know, just finding a new way of thinking. I do see similarities cause I've experienced both. Um, I don't, I don't give, you know, I'm not a certified hypnotherapist. I'm not a certified NLP practitioner. So I don't necessarily, I do, I pull things from that mm-hmm. for sure. And those of you guys just listening, Samantha is waving a clock in front no. of the camera right now, <laughs> trying to hypnotize me. Okay. So hypnosis, we don't use clocks anymore, but yeah. Yeah. You it's- will release this podcast. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am going through, not that anyone cares about this, but I'm going through a, a hypno birthing course now. And huh. it, and so I can speak to hypnotherapy because I do it twice a day. And it's just, um, I, if you're familiar with like binaural beats, when you listen to headphones and there's different um, frequencies coming at you to get you in like a theta state or whatever it is to relax you, you are, when you're in the right state through these sounds and the way they're entering your, your auditory, you know, space, it sure helps an app you. For that? Oh, for sure. Yeah. What do you There's use? A bunch. Like so that well, you this just one's do- through a course, but you can get a binaural beats mm. app. But you just do this it. on your own. This hit this yeah. hypno so in a way it really is meditation. It's just kind of relabeled a, a little differently. So meditation is a very broad meditation is uh, getting yourself in a state of presence and, and relaxation. Um, now how you do that is going to differ. It could be through hypnosis. This is in this case self-hypnosis to an extent. I mean, I'm doing it alone. Um, But that, I mean, just to go back to your question about this client who, you know, decided in the end and what people can do when they're not sure is, I'm not saying hypnotize yourself. I'm saying there is a lot of power in visualization and guided visualization and, and what might be getting in the way is that you you have these kind of limitations in your mind. So your mind is tricking you to tell you, I am fulfilled. Everything's fine. Um, when it might not be, but you won't know until you do that kind of deep work and go inward. And the way that we go inward is limiting distractions. And the way that we limit distractions is getting rid of like the, the crap around us that's weighing us down. That's the number okay? one. Like the, cause you always yeah. come back to that, which is interesting. Yeah. Like I find very fascinating compared to a lot of other, you know, coaches I've talked to. And would you like consider yourself a life coach? Like, is that how you would label yourself as? Yeah, I I label myself as an identity coach. You identify as a life coach? coach. (laughs) Identity coach, yes. Yeah. Because that to me, that's the answer. That's the Mm. answer of how people leave their jobs or become Elon Musk or, you know, they, you can't have a, a, a limiting identity, a unserving identity and accomplish those things. You just can't. So how do we do it? Is we we take control of our lives. We don't just live in it day to day and let it control us. We make the changes and make the shift around us. And so, um, yeah, I, 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 through working with a coach discovered, Oh my gosh, I've lived in all these cities and, and have this pattern. And it's like, every time I moved, I would feel lighter and freer. And it's like, "Hmm, why did I feel like that? Oh, because I purged a bunch of stuff because I left, shitty relationships. I left crappy jobs. I started fresh. And I mean, it's even as simple as thinking about clearing out your desk, right? You're like, I'm going to clean my office today or clear all the papers on my desk. And then you go back to that task you're working on. You have this newfound clarity. Well, let's apply that to your entire life. Imagine what you could accomplish and who you could become. But how did you refine that? You know, how did you identify that moving my couch here instead of here and like putting this plant behind me and like it's very simplistic, how, like how, how that directly impacts the um, effect on your life and, and uh, building that vision for yourself. Yeah. So it's not necessarily interior design, but it's definitely looking at something 
around you saying, you know, like, man, this pen was from, I'm showing Connor a pen. You guys can't see us. This pen was from my old job and it's just like, it's a blue pen. (laughs) We're going to pretend it's from my old job. I don't like, this is a bad example, but we're going to be transparent. (laughs) (laughs) I don't like seeing it. It drains me. I'm going to get rid of it. And you get rid of it and you're like, all right, like that's not in my life anymore. Like I feel like I can move forward. Okay. Obviously. But how would you identify that that drains you? Because most people, I would say that probably the vast majority of people don't recognize something that is draining them. I, it, me, every, there's probably something around, you know, every day I probably come across something I'm doing or consuming that's actually draining me. So how do you re- recognize that that is a draining uh, factor, like a draining item? It's not as hard as it seems. It's literally taking the time. Like this is, this is why this helps people is because there's a framework through it. Um, but it's taking the time to look around and you know, like you're like, I don't, it's, it's all like, do I need this? Do I want this? Is this aligned with who I am? But your question may be, well, how do people know who they are and, and how do they know how to get to that next step? It's, um, I always go back to this quote from Tony Robbins, like our, the quality of our life is determined by the quality of questions we ask or ask ourselves, but, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but that's where we kind of start is we, it, the, the first module, the first week of the course is laying foundation and, and, you know, discovering like what really makes us happy. We lose that. And part of the exercise is to discover who we want to be at least to get to the next point of discarding is you know, what, we go back to childhood a lot, like what made us happy as a child or when, you know, when was the last time that you were in a, I call it a dream state. And the dream state is you're in a place where like time is standing still. You even like forget to eat or you forget to go to the bathroom or the sun's already down and you're like, where did the day go? I'm just Mm -hmm. so lost in what I'm doing. And some people are like, I don't remember or, oh my gosh, that was years ago. And then what were you doing? So we do this work of kind of rediscovering passions. Like there's so many of us, the majority of us, we're not doing one of our passions every day. Like then why are we here? What are we working toward? Because we keep working towards that thing over there. And that's why I I think for myself I stumbled upon this. I mean I discovered that I just kept moving and then I feel great and then the cycle would repeat itself because I was still living in my own my old identity. Mm. I'd accumulate a bunch of stuff. I'd go. It's a flywheel, whether towards the positive or towards the negative. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So um, in terms of your book, which I'm looking at right now, where should people start? Like, should they start with your book or should they start with the course that you're planning on launching? So that's a great question. And it, it happens in different orders. I, always encourage people to read the book first. I made it, made it minimalistic by design. So it's a very it's easy, a really attractive book. I mean, if you guys yeah. <laughs> go and look it up, I love the succulent on the front. Yeah. A friend of mine helped design that. Uh-huh. She's fantastic. But yeah, it's called the less effect design your life for happiness and purpose. It's on Amazon. Um, and really, I, I always kind of recommend reading it first. If you know, if if people are up for it, because it really sets the stage of my personal experience, because I went through this too. And I didn't know I was not conscious to what I was creating. I felt trapped. I felt stuck. I felt like there was nothing I could do. And yes, it took working with a coach. It took really becoming conscious of what I was doing, which can be really, really hard taking a long, hard look at like, look what you've created. And, and the, I mean, the fir- if we really want to talk about the first step, it's taking responsibility for the state of your life currently. Saying, you know, maybe my marriage isn't that great. I'm going to take responsibility for that. You know, maybe my job sucks and I've been in it for 20 years. Yes, I have to make money, but I chose that because there are other ways to make money, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, so really taking responsibility. And once you do that, you're like, okay, let's dive in. What have I created around me and how can I help shift this? So the the book goes into all the different areas. It goes into like the, the concept of energy and how energy is everywhere. We live in energy and it either sucks us or like sucks us dry, you know, depletes us, drains us, or it's going to energize us and inspire us. There's really no in between. So, and sometimes when we're getting drained, 
we don't know it. We're scrolling through social media, but we don't know. It's like depleting, depleting, depleting. So it's the, the book really goes into kind of identity, you know, the concept around that energy, kind of the different areas of what we've created in our physical environment, our social environment with our relationships, our habits with our routine and, and really um, helping the, the, the person discover that like you're in control. Like I was there, you know, but you have control over what you want to create. So and it sets the stage. Sure. Yeah, I, I think that's really great. And um, I'm super excited to dig into this. And so when when people are um, starting off in this journey and well, well, let's talk about you. I mean, what are you mostly? Um, I just use the term meditation, hip, hypnotherapy, like, what are you envisioning? Like, what's the picture that you're painting so people can understand um, the ambition levels that you're talking about here? Uh, can, I'm, I'm not let me sure. rephrase that. Yeah. So what is your big picture vision for, for myself, your life, for my, for your for own, my life, for yes. my own life? Yes. So I guess we can take that back to my why and my why behind all of this is I, I, I think a lot of us share this is like we, if we don't have to work hard, I think we make things hard, right? We make our lives hard. We make things complicated. They don't have to be. So it's, for me, the big picture is having just a really simplified lifestyle that also truly allows me to, you know, I've always wanted to have a family and, and now I'm getting to do this and I want to create a place where I have the flexibility through simplicity, through building this, this kind of concept and this career path. I have the ability to be with family and live a very happy and fulfilled life. So for me, happy and fulfilled and purposeful life means community and family and relationships and, and making memories. And I don't think I'm alone in that. Right. So if I can help guide people through my experience on how to simplify their lives to get clarity, to create something that brings them fulfillment and they're not burning the candle at both ends because you don't have to, that, again, brings me even more happiness and fulfillment. I'm doing work that I love. I'm, I'm just so fulfilled in everything I do, and I think it's mm. just going to get better and better as I get out there. So I, I love that you're saying that. I'm get, like All the people I've been talking to, I've been getting this trend in, and you're right, this shift is happening. No longer do us as humans – because of all the tools, all the information, our capabilities, do we have to burn the candles at both ends to be successful? Like um, I'm part of this group called Billion Dollar Body, and it's really about being a three-dimensional businessman and, and really reshifting what it means to be a business man. It's, it's more men's oriented, but it applies to women also, is that health, wealth, and happiness, you don't have to sacrifice one to have the other, you really truly can have and live as cliche as it is a balanced life. And uh, Samantha's here to help you guys accomplish that. So when are you, um, when's the course coming live? So as long as the baby doesn't come before the course launch, I'm due any day, um, probably in the next week or so. Okay. Uh, either way, if you go on the lesseffect.com, E-F-F-E-C-T, lesseffect.com, you'll find uh, some information there. And there is a spot to sign up to learn about the launch and you'll get notified. You said it's an eight part course or something it's like eight that? eight weeks. Yeah. Eight week. Yeah. Eight week yep. course. Okay. It's all digital. People can consume on their devices. Yeah. And that's, that's the goal. Cause you know, I'm going to be out of pocket for a few months on maternity leave. Cause that's, that's where I, that's my priority where I need mm -hmm. to be. Um, and this way I can help serve people during that time. And, and yeah, that's the idea. So you can find more information on, on my website. And do you know how much you're going to sell it for? Um, not at the moment. I will be running some promos in the beginning. And one of, one of those promos is that uh, if you are a founding member during the first launch, you will get a free membership for life to the, the community site as well. So yeah, that I know. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well that, well, that sounds great, guys. You'll definitely have to go check that out. And how can people get into contact uh, with you? Um, so you place. can, again, go through the website or you can just email me directly, uh, hello at thelesseffect.com. Do you use Instagram? Is that kind of your main platform? 
Oh yeah, I'm on there. Um, so my uh, business Instagram is the underscore less underscore effect. Awesome. And I'm on Facebook as well. You can just look up less effect and, and Samantha Joy, my name. You'll find Samantha me there. Joy is out there killing it on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you too, you too. Uh, Facebook's just kind of a content dumpster for me. Like LinkedIn is where my brand is, but like I didn't jump on Facebook early enough to do anything really great there yeah. so far. But, um, but no, this has been awesome. I, I really appreciate it. And guys, I hope that was really helpful for you. You'll definitely have to go check out the book. So um, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review to the podcast, and we'll chat with you next time. 